All right, guys, we're out here at the airport, about to take off in 048, actually about to do my pre-flight. But a lot has happened since I have made a video. Um, you guys know early on, if you were watching my videos, that getting my private pilot's license was the main goal. All my spare time has been spent doing that. Spoiler alert, I have my private pilot's license. Um, but today's video, I'm gonna bring you guys up to speed on everything that happened, some of the things that have changed with the airplane, some of the um, stories about my uh, check ride. It was pretty interesting as far as uh, private pilot check rides go. Um, and then everything that's happened aviation-wise uh, up till now, and then my future plans, paramotor related and aviation related, or airplane related rather. So let's get this thing pre-flighted to get in the air. I got some cool airports I wanna fly out to today that I haven't been to. Uh, so I'll take you guys with me and fill you in along the way. Peace. cabin you pull a lever to start the engine and half the lever just broke off in my hand so here's what that looks like now see half the lever here that busted off so I can still grab it here if I absolutely had to I could always grab it right there and yank too to start it but that sucks because that's gonna be probably impossible to find um, I don't know what to do about that but it also kind of hurt my hand <laughs> off to a great start that's strike number one if I hit three things go wrong before I take off, then I, I'm not, I don't fly that day. So that's, I'm counting that as one thing. We'll get our weather here. Uh, one, two, three, nothing, and one, one, niner, five, seven. One. Somerville Airport, automated weather observation, two, one, one, eight, Zulu. Wind, two, six, zero, at six knots. Visibility, more than one, zero. Sky condition, clear, below 1, 2,000. Temperature, 1, 5 Celsius. Dew point, 4 Celsius. Altimeter, 2. All right. Got our weather. Altimeter is set. Transponder squawking. Entry on and connected. Four flights connected. Taxi light, bring that on because we're getting ready to go here. Brakes, we'll test them when we roll. Attitude indicator is looking good. We'll make suction. Burn coordinator is on, doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, heading indicator set to compass should be what six? Just to the tree, yep. Zero five five. Activate flight plan. We don't have one. We don't have a passenger today. Activate flight plan again. Cabin doors in and locked. I'm leave my window open for now. Park and brake. Don't have one. Flight controls. Another check. Free and correct. And we'll do a run up when we get out there. And brakes are working. We're gonna taxi around a little wider today the engine a minute to warm up. A little bit chilly out today, and um, the runway that I'm taxiing to is right there, so even with a run-up, probably not going to get much time to warm it up unless I go around here. Plus, I got another aircraft I'm now noticing that's doing a run-up over there, probably waiting. So, so yeah, guys, um, you'll also notice that we only have one exterior view on the airplane. I need to install. I have two more mounts. I've got a mount um, for one of the inspection covers that someone gave me. It's pretty awesome. Shout out to Clint. And um, I have another mount that I'm going to put on the back. I had a really nice um, mount from Flight Fit, Flight Flicks that went on the back of my plane here on the tail tie down, but it got destroyed uh, in a windstorm. So actually we had a nasty windstorm here recently and um, my, my plane was tied down, but when you put your... Uh, uh, whatever it is, the yoke clamp on, uh, it points your elevator in the back down. Um, and that's to prevent it from lifting up. Well, if you get a strong enough wind from the other side, from behind you, it'll actually push the tail into the ground. And that's what happened. So I pushed my tail into the ground and literally uh, destroyed that mount, pushed the mount up into the bottom of the plane and dented the bottom of the plane a little bit, um, which really, really sucks because that mount was expensive and now I've got dents in the bottom of my plane. Um, obviously, it's nothing huge. I can just... Uh, touch it up, but huge bummer. The plane was like sitting 45 degrees in the spot where I parked it, and I parked it straight.
straight, so. Anywho, I, I don't know what this guy's doing, and I don't hear him on frequency, so. Um, probably should. Star Rail traffic, 83 Golf, turning left down one, runway 24, Somerville. Um, I'm gonna go around him here. I'm gonna do my run up. This way. Let's do that. Mixture full rich. 1700. A drop. Recovery. One left drop. Recovery. Arm heat. Recovery. Green, 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 green. Check idle. We idle. Cool. I'll give you guys a few stories here before we even get in the air. One of them, I just told you. The other one. Uh, carb icing. I had my first run-in with actual carb icing here the other day when I was flying. And I always check my carb heat on my run-up anyways. Um, but, man, oh man, I, I did a refresher course after I landed on everything about carb heat just to understand it a little bit more after this event. But I was flying home from going to visit my buddy Todd Falstead. He's got a YouTube channel. He's pretty prominent in the paramotor community. Uh, awesome dude. Um, airline pilot. Guy's been, he knows... I mean, just everything about aviation, and he's just a genuinely good guy. So I went out to visit him. That's not making calls, bro. You're on the wrong frequency, son. Making the runway. Um, and I was on my way home, and uh, actually, I'm going to stop telling the story and focus on, on taking off, and then we'll get back to it in the air. So we're going to traffic Cessna 17048, taxiing out to runway 24, uh, going to depart from Bravo, Somerville. Somerville, traffic 83 Golf, turning final. Somerville, runway 24. All right, so never mind, we got a minute. We got an airplane on final and one waiting in front of us here. So I'm way home from my buddy Todd. It's cold, I'm up at 5,500 feet. And um, all of a sudden, uh, well not all of a sudden, I started descending and I have to descend pretty fast. I don't have to, I chose to descend fast because I wanted some, I wanted to increase my speed and get home a little quicker. So I'm descending really fast and I, anytime I descend anyways, I'm, I'm aware of carb icing and I, I if I don't need the power, I put my carb heat on. Um, but in this case, I was just hitting and I still, all of a sudden, my power starts, my engine starts sputtering. And I immediately, I'm thinking, okay, there goes my engine. I try to give it a little more throttle. It's sputtering, sputtering. I, I push my mixture in just a little bit. Uh, I check my carb heat is out. I check my fuel real quick. And then I grab my checklist. Uh, my power is kind of kind of maintaining. I grab my checklist. I go, I think it's carb icing anyway. So I go to the icing. I go through all that checklist. It's pretty easy in this airplane. I already hit it. Um, so to confirm carb icing, I put my carb heat off. Civil traffic, Sky Flight 2 Sierra Kilo is going to go and, and line up um, on 24 Somerville. I put my carb heat in, and the RPM got traffic. worse. Oh, the, go. the carb icing got worse. I put my carb heat back out uh, on, and I noticed uh, that my RPM got got higher, which is the opposite of what should happen if you don't have ice. Anyway, I just I slowed my descent. I uh, I pitched for best glide, which I was actually over that, so I was able to maintain a speed higher than that. So I didn't I didn't have to pitch too much for it. But just maintained out as high altitude as I could. My best place to land was very easy. I was over an airport, so that's where I was going if I lost my engine. And um, I just waited for the carb ice to melt off. So, and what you do for that is when your carb heat's on, you look for your engine RPM to get a little bit worse and then better. So it gets worse because you start melting the ice and the water goes into the, uh, the engine. And then it'll get better as that all dries off. And then when you put your carb heat off, you should see full RPM because you're obviously not putting hot, uh, low-density air into the engine and that's all exactly what happened so I was pretty happy with the way I handled it but it was a little bit frightening and um, it's just uh, another reminder that our icing is a big freaking deal especially when it's cold like this so so we're going to traffic test on a 17048 uh, taking off runway 24 at Bravo Somerville but today guys we're headed out to what's the name of this place uh, Manning or Santee Cooper Star Rail traffic 83 golf turning left downwind runway 24 Somerville uh, airport and it's just a random airport I haven't been to before that's nearby, so uh, I'm just headed there to explore it, see what's going on. All right, here we go. Our car heat's in, mixture, full rich. Flaps confirmed up, all my lights are on. Trim set, we're ready to go. So we're going to traffic one seven zero four eight, taking off runway 24, so we're Okay, making good power. Engine instruments are all on the green. Airspeed's alive. Somerville traffic, Skyfight 2 Sierra Kilo, left five, left with the nose wheel. Somerville. Gotta let it fly. Nice and easy. Tap the brakes. There we go. Wow, it is smooth. Up. Oh, Look too soon. Pitch for 75. Everything's still looking good. Somerville traffic, 
Sky 520, Kilo, left downwind, 24, Somerville. Somerville traffic, Cessna 17048, turning left crosswind for 24, Somerville. Somerville traffic, 83 Golf, turning left base, runway 24, Somerville. Somerville traffic, Cessna 048, turning left downwind for 24, Somerville. Somerville traffic, 83 Golf, turning final, Somerville, runway 24. Somerville traffic, Cessna 17048, departing off the downwind for 24, uh, going to head out to the north. Uh, last call, Somerville traffic. All right, all set up here for a climb out to the north. Somerville traffic, Sky 520, Kilo final 24, Somerville. We'll just do a slow cruise climb out that way. Okay, so yeah, the car racing story, that was pretty crazy. Um, but these are all stories after I've got my license, right? Obviously, I'm out flying around now. Um, and a ton has happened, you guys, since uh, I last made a video or we last even caught up here. So uh, I'll get you caught up briefly. So first things first, I did pass my private pilot check ride. So huge deal. I actually passed my check ride back on December uh, 4th. So early December of 2021. Uh, today is, what is it? It's the 13th of January. So I've had my license for over a month now. Uh, and actually, Real traffic. It, probably not this flight. Off, turning left this flight will probably end with 99 hours. Uh, but my next flight, I'll actually I'll surpass 100 hours of flying. I've been I've been flying a lot. That's that's the goal, right? Build my hours. Uh, I don't know if I've mentioned it in previous videos, but my goal is to eventually fly uh, for a living. So uh, I like my job now, but I like Sorry, flying a lot more. And if I can, uh, you know, fly and build hours four. and eventually do that, uh, and get paid for it, I want to do that. So. Uh, don't look, the first thing you need to do if you want to do that is I'll turn this down. First thing you need to do for that is you need to build hours. So that's what I'm that's what I'm doing. Uh, my check ride though. Uh, so first of all, I had to fly out to an airport called Conway, but that's in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So it's about an hour flight from here, a little bit under that. Um, I actually have a DPE right at my airport here in South Carolina, but he does not like me and. Um, yeah, I just didn't think that he would give me a fair chance, and I just didn't feel like feel like dealing with it. So um, I had to fly an hour away to get that. So I had to wake up really early. My check ride was at 9 o'clock. Flew out there. I was out there by 8. So I was out there an hour early. And it was uh, a great flight out there. Just beautiful, smooth. I was in a great mood. I was feeling confident. And it was just, it was great. So I land out there an hour early. I'm just relaxing, having coffee. Not doing too much study and brushing up on a couple of things, but I feel prepared, so I'm not really worried about it. And then 9 o'clock rolls around, then 9 10 rolls around, 9 whatever, and my DPE calls me and he says, uh, Hey, are you at Myrtle Beach? I was like, I'm at Conway. And he's like, Oh, did we discuss this? I was like, Yes, we did. We discussed meeting at Conway because my transponder wasn't uh, certified and I didn't want to fly in controlled airspace. You're going to charge me an extra 50 or $100 uh, to do that. He, he says to me, he goes, you should have called to remind me. And I was like, well, um, okay. Like, I didn't obviously agree with that, but, uh, you know, he's my DPE, and I'm about to uh, take a test with this guy, and he's potentially going to give me my pilot's license. So I'm not about to argue with him. So I just say, okay, uh, what do you want me to do? Um, yeah, that was, that was a bad start to the day, right? Him not showing up to the right airport. Anyway, for me to go to Myrtle Beach, I could have done it because I had actually got my transponder uh, certified, but I would have had to call my flight instructor and get, get a, uh, an endorsement to fly to that airport because that's what you have to do when you don't have a license. And it was a big deal, so he ended up just driving out to me. So by this time, it's two hours. I've been up for three, flying for three, up for four, and he, two hours at the airport already. Then he gets there, um, and I don't think he was in much of a rush. He, he was talking to people that he had known. And I'm already tired, and I was sick the whole week before, so I'm just like, man, I want to get started. So then you got to go through all your paperwork. Uh, you got to go get your, you got to license and go through your logbook and go through the 80 whatever forms from the FAA. There's like a stack of paperwork you have to go through and verify and show. It takes a long time. I think it probably took us, I mean, at least an hour and a half to get through it all with, with you know, and we were kind of chit-chatting a little bit, things like that. So. I mean, we're five hours in before I even start my oral exam. And then the oral exam ended up lasting like two and a half hours. It was not a really grueling oral exam, but it was just a lot going on. And then there were some things where like, I, my PPE, he does commercial and instrument check rides usually. So I don't know if he's done a private pilot check ride in a long time, but um, he was like telling me some things that I was like, I don't know about that. 
So anyway, he was like telling me things that I knew were not correct because I had just studied them. So he kind of like put into question some stuff. I was like, man, I don't want to deal with this. And I wasn't going to argue with him. And it was just not, not the greatest oil. I, I did well on the oil exam though. Um, so I was happy with that. When that ended, I'm mentally destroyed. Uh, I have like a headache because I haven't eaten that day, which I don't usually eat breakfast, so I'm not going to change it up for the, you know, for that day. So, but at this point, it's like 2 in the afternoon, and I'm, it's like sunny out, I have a headache, I'm like, Jesus. And then we go to the, the flight portion, and I, any other day, I probably wouldn't have flown. If it was like, just me, I'd be like, I just don't feel like it today. I have a headache, I don't want to fly. Um, I just would have not, probably not flown that day, it wouldn't have been enjoyable. It went okay. I mean, I passed, obviously, but it was probably the worst flying I've ever done in my life. I, I messed up my power on stall, which I've never done. Even the first one I ever did, did fine on it. But when I did the power on stall, I, I stalled and broke right because I was uncoordinated. And that leads to a spin in some cases. I was able to recover, which I think is what saved me. Tommy recovered the airplane the correct way. Um, but he told me right then and there that that was almost a disqualifying mark. So now that's in my head. I'm like, fuck, you know, like... And then I like did so many other dumb things because I was so nervous. I'm sweating. I'm like, I have a splitting headache. I'm flying, and I'm like over over analyzing everything. I'm like, I go to make right traffic, got a traffic with a left hand pattern, which also I've never done since that or up to that point and since then. It's just not. I've never messed the, that up. It's like a dumb thing to mess up. Uh, but I did that. I went to turn right. He's like, it's left traffic. I was like, son of a bitch. Like, I'm like this guy's not gonna give me a license. I don't know. After that it was, yeah, I think he was kind of done flying. I was done flying. He's like. No, we got to do uh, a short field takeoff. I'm like, uh, we already did a short field takeoff. He's like, we did? I'm like, yeah, man. Anyway, after we landed, I'm thinking I failed. I did terrible. My landings weren't great that day. I mean, nothing bad, but nothing like, I was hoping to grease him in every time. You know, I had high, high expectations for myself. I did not even come here meeting them. Um, so, it, it was it was a bad day. I landed. And he didn't tell me anything. I mean, we're taxiing, he's quiet. I, I parked the plane, turn off the engine, and he says, congratulations, you passed, shakes my hand. Dude, I almost cried. Because I, I was so just mentally destroyed. Physically, I was tired, hungry, headache. I'm thinking I failed. I'm pissed off thinking about that. I'm like, I can't believe all this work. And also, it costs money. You have to pay the DPE. In this case, over $700 to... Um, for him to test you. So if you fail, you have to go back and do it all again. And again, I'm having to fly an hour to this DPE because the DPE that's at this airport, uh, he don't like me. So it's like, I was so stressed out when I thought I failed. But when I passed, I, I was just like overwhelmed with like emotion. I was so excited. Um, and then after that, even my flight home was terrible. I had a gnarly headwind. They were doing controlled burns everywhere. I couldn't breathe or see. At altitude, it was like a nasty haze of breathing in, fire smoke. Just a horrible day. I got home, and I was so happy to not be flying, which is very rare for me. Um, but it, it was terrible. Just a horrible day. Just horrible. Uh, since then, uh, since I'm getting my license, uh, right after that, I actually went out to Mexico and uh, went to Closer to the Sun, uh, which was pretty awesome because I was in a good mood about the license. Went out there, listened to some reggae music for five days, and hung out with... Uh, awesome friends, awesome people. Just a fantastic day, or fantastic vacation. And after that, when I got home, uh, I was excited to be home because I started flying. Uh, to date, so in the past less than a month, I have taken seven people flying. So I've taken my wife, I have taken uh, my mom, my stepdad, a bunch of friends. It has been just the most amazing experience. That was the whole point of getting into aviation. Well, the second point, 50-50. One, I want to fly forever, uh, and I want to do it for a living. And two, I want to share aviation. That was always my biggest complaint with respect to... Check, 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 check. My skull just too low. My biggest complaint with respect to uh, flying paramotors was you can't share it. Now, you can go get your tandem certification, all that stuff, but that requires you spending money on gear. And to be honest with you, as long as I've been flying paramotors, I still don't feel confident enough to fly someone tandem. I just think you need to be very proficient uh, for that. And my personal feeling about myself, I don't fly paramotors enough to put someone else's life in my hands in a paramotor. So I just never pursued that. Uh, so general aviation was the main way for that. And it has been so rewarding. Um, 
taking passengers, especially people, my friends who've never even like seen a small airplane in real life. It's just been amazing. Um, such a great experience. So much fun. Uh, what's the Unicom? 122.8. Um, it's just been everything I thought it would be. Just super, super enjoyable. Uh, and I've been loving it. And I've been flying every chance I get. I know a lot of you guys followed me on this channel initially for paramotor content. I'm not done with paramotors, I hate to break it to you. Uh, I still love my paramotor. I have no intentions on getting rid of it, and I have every intention on flying more. Uh, but right now it's cold, and the airplane has heat, and it gets dark early, and I can get in the airport. I just drive to the airport. I don't got to pack up any gear. Drive to the airport, pre-flight, get in the plane, start up, and go. Um, so it's just an easier thing to do right now to fly the plane, and I'm you know, building hours. That's the goal. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's what this channel is going to be for a little while is uh, flying airplanes. If I get a chance to fly the paramotor, uh, I will. Uh, so that's that's pretty much up to date, you guys. Uh, yeah, not not too much else. Uh, it's it's been mostly uneventful flying, fun flying. I got to fly some formation with my buddy Joe the other day, and his, his kit box was amazing. Uh, hit every airport around here. I've got to go to some private strips recently that have been just so much fun. Um, and just been really fortunate with what I've been able to do recently. So, super happy about that. Stan T. Cooper Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. Two, one, four, five, Zulu weather. Wind, two, four, zero, at three. Visibility, one, zero. Clear, below, one, two. Four zero at three. I'll be taking runway two zero, which is left traffic. So I'm gonna enter the downwind. Lucky me. Well, traffic citation zero hotel kilo. We're joining about. They're out over the lake right now, uh, which I love flying over. It's beautiful out here. A little scary, but I got my little glide path indicator. Says I can make it to the other side right now uh, if my engine dies, and I for sure can make it back there. There's a nice field over there, so. Um, yeah, so we're going out to Santee Cooper Airport. I'm, uh, she's one of my 10 miles out right now. Flight plan, flight plan, descent to destination 480. So I gotta start descending soon, actually. Oh, I can see the airport. Hey, look at that. I don't need these anymore. Uh, yeah, so today's plan was just to make it out to this airport. I hadn't been out here before, and I love exploring these little regional airports and uh, checking out the FBOs. Bring the mixture in a little bit, car repeat out, and I will start my descent. Okay, gas is on, undercarriage, we're good. Fanning light, leave that on. Make sure you're bringing that in. Our Pete's out. There we go. Make a quick call here. Santee Cooper traffic, Cessna 17048, about uh, eight miles to the south, uh, descending uh, through 3,000 feet. Gonna enter the traffic pattern of a downwind for 2-0, uh, Santee Cooper. Yeah, man, this is this is the great Low part. Traffic, many four X ray Lima, uh, about nine mile final the runway, one general aviation, man. I just love, like, I knew I was flying today after work. I knew the weather was good. I was like, man, I wonder if there's an airport nearby I haven't been to. And I was like, oh, Santee Cooper. Check it out. Looks good. Let's go there. Awesome, awesome uh, privilege to have, man. This is something a lot of people don't get to do. That is for sure. Got a guy, a thousand people below me. Going that away. Oh, Charleston exec. There he goes. Skyhawk 3137 Echo. We are five miles east of the field. We're going to join the downwind for runway 22. Charleston exec. A lot of uh, airports use the same CTAF frequencies. Uh, 122.8, 122.9, 123, nothing. One, I don't know, there's a whole bunch of others. But 122.8 and 122.9 are heavily used out here. I'm hearing four airports on this frequency. When you guys are approaching an airport, entering on the downwind, the preferred way to do that is enter on a 45 degree angle. There's no traffic here, so I could enter it straight on, but uh, uh, I mean, you don't need to make radio calls at airports like this, so always a good idea to follow the rules if you can. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So we're coming through 2,000 feet. Probably would like to be at closer to pattern altitude here. Actually, you no, know, I think I'm good, man. I'm about to be, I'm about to be real good. I can widen it out a little bit. No car bicing. We're at 50 degrees. They say you can get car bicing at up to 70 degrees Fahrenheit um, if you don't use carb heat. So. That would be unfortunate. I think it was like almost 
freezing when I got it up at altitude the other day. All right. Low county traffic, 3547 Mike, left downwind runway 23. Touch and go. Santee Cooper traffic, Cessna 17048 on the 45 uh, for the left downwind runway 20, going to be full stop, Santee Cooper. All right, going to pitch up and slow down. Carpeed is in, and we have power, so there is zero carbides. I'm so <laughs> paranoid about that right now. Santee Cooper traffic, Cessna 17048 is left downwind for 20, full stop, Santee Cooper. Dun, 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 dun. All right, walk you guys through my uh, pre-landing well, checklist here. So I'm on downwind, pretty short runway. I beam the numbers, here's the, here's the, uh, Here's the process here, so Charles wait for my numbers. There's my numbers. Carpeed out, four, mixture full rich, two, bring the power back to 15, and give right me side. 10 degrees of flaps. That's something I do need to get fixed in this airplane right now is my flaps. They're moving five, twice as slow as they should. Sovereign. Um, so Sovereign. I keep that in, in mind when I'm doing anything around here. Uh, I should have mentioned also my speed was below 100, which you need to engage your flaps in this airplane. Pretty damn easy, because unless you're in a dive, you're not really going over 100 miles an hour. All right, then when that runway is at a 45 degree angle off your back, you're gonna make your left turn to left uh, left base here. Santee Cooper traffic, Cessna 040, turning left base, runway 20, full stop, Santee Cooper. All right, then you give yourself another 20 degrees of flaps. Sometimes you can do that at the turn. I'm doing it now, I got a lot of speed, a lot of space, so I'm comfortable doing it. Adjust my trim, make sure I keep that nose down, keep that speed up. I like about 80 on base. This plane slows down really easy, so I don't have to worry about bleeding off speed, but it is something I'm keeping an eye on because uh, my next airplane will probably be a little faster and I'll need to manage it a little bit better. Okay, and my final. Santee Cooper traffic, Cessna 17048, turning final will be 20, full stop Santee Cooper. And it'll make a nice easy turn. That's where a lot of people spin stall onto the ground, so if you overshoot it, don't worry about it. Correct it later. Hold your bank where it is. Don't increase your bank. Uh, Gas is on, undercarriage is welded, mixture's full rich, prop set, switch is set, seat belts are on, and my carb heat's out. Now I'm starting to look for my speed. I want 75 over the fence, right down to 60 on touchdown. And you use your throttle for altitude and your pitch for speed, so I'm going to pitch up just a tad here, slow us down. I'm right on glide slope, so I'm going to maintain this. And down the runway, it looks clear. I don't see anybody, anything. Here we go, we're landing. It's good. Nice and smooth. We're bringing back the power. Idle. Have it the runway. Down the runway. Transition. Beautiful. First taxiway. Had to eat up some brakes there, but I didn't want to go all the way to the end. <laughs> I just checked my brakes recently. I put new tires on this airplane, and they were good, so I got plenty. Santee Cooper traffic, Cessna 17048, clear runway 20, Santee Cooper. Cool. Never been here before. That landing, not great, actually. Uh, I looked down the runway a little bit. Uh, a little bit too late. And uh, I was too fast when I touched, so I didn't bounce or anything, but I kind of planted it. It was more of like a, like a short field uh, kind of landing rather than um, a regular landing, so not, not great. So I'll go through my uh, checklist here. Flaps are up. Need my mixture for taxi. Santee Cooper traffic, Cessna 1704, taxi into the ramp, Santee Cooper. All right, don't look as much here. Nobody on the ramp, so no airplanes to check out. And... Like there is an aviation department and an FBO, so maybe they're open. It's almost five o'clock, so that's when a lot of them close. So let's run in there and check it out. And uh, yeah, cool, another airport. It looks like self serve fuel here too. That's cool. That's good to know. And it looks like it's working. It's nice.
locked. Luckily, I don't have to pee too bad. Maybe there's a lock box on the other side. Uh, I was just gonna use, is there an FBO here? Is this the FBO? Yeah, oh, yeah, this is FBO. Okay, I was just gonna use the bathroom real quick. Sure. Great, mm -hmm. thank you so much. What a nice lady. So yeah, that was their little FBO. Um, really clean, bathrooms, water, but not open 24 seven. She says that the fuel here is open 24 seven uh, and there is a bathroom over here. So I'm gonna go check that out just to explore the airport a little bit. Um, they pulled the classic move where you run out of soap but then you fill up the soap container with water and shake it up, get a little more soap. So, that was funny. There's your self-serve fuel. They have 100 low lead and Jet A. Just cool. And these newer self-serve fuel stations are nice. Because if I just type my tail number into there, it, uh, it remembers me. Which is cool. I don't have to type in all my address and all that crap. Got some big hangers here. I bet they got some nice jets. I thought about doing like a um, a video series, like what's in the hangar. Um, I know a lot of people with hangers, and I'm around airports a lot. I bet I can get people to uh, let me in there and explore it. Oh, public restroom. There it is. It's in one of the hangers. Cool. Um, but yeah, we just go in hangers and check them out and yeah, see what's in there. Maybe interview the pilot. Maybe get a ride. Never know. Um, We'll see. We'll see if I can make that happen. But, all right. Um, yeah, just a little airport exploration. I'm going to head over to Mount Pleasant now, which is a haul. No way the cameras are going to make it that far. Probably going to end the video here. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you don't like these flight vlogs, sorry about that. Send them to someone who does like them. Um, and uh, if you did like it, be sure to smash that like button. If you didn't like it, hit the dislike button. Click it twice. Um, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, all that jazz. And uh, yeah, catch you guys later. Maybe we'll catch you take off till the cameras die. Peace.